Good morning, everyone. I'm Winona. I am the leader of Busted Knuckles, the adult recovery ministry in uh, Roadhouse Biker Church, which is located in San Bernardino, California. Hope you're having a great morning. It is absolutely gorgeous outside. Again, we are thankful to the Lord for these beautiful days that he's giving us. Before we get started in our devotional today, let's, uh, let's give our Father a, a word of thanks. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you with just grateful hearts, Father God. We are thankful for the sunshine, the birds that are singing, the bees that are buzzing. Father, we're grateful for all that you've blessed us with those small, simple things, Father. I pray that we don't take advantage of it and forget that you've provided everything for us. And so, Lord, today I ask that you just open up our, our eyes, open up our hearts, open up our minds to your word today. We're just grateful that you provide us a gift of comfort, a gift of a comforter. And so, Father, thank you so much. In your son's name, amen. So, yes, today our scripture is in the book of John, chapter 16, and it's, it's about our comforter. It's about a gift that we've been given. Um, from, from our Father, he gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit to help us, to, to guide us through. And then in turn, the Holy Spirit gives us gifts, gifts of discernment and, and good choices. And he just, the Holy Spirit is with us constantly. And so we just need to remember that we have that comforter. And so we are in recovery, you know, we're in the eighth month. So we're talking about the eighth step. And it's basically, we made a list of persons we had harmed and we're becoming willing to make amends. That's, that's the important thing right now. And step eight is we are becoming willing. We become willing to make amends. So basically God doesn't rush us through these steps. We need to get a list put together first. And we need to become willing. It's not like we're going to get this list together and go right on out the door and start making amends. And a lot of times in recovery, people want to, when they've got, you know, 30 days, 60 days sobriety, they want to jump right out there and tell everybody that they're sorry. Well, you know, a lot of times those people are not going to take you seriously because uh, nine times out of 10, they've seen it before. And so we need to have some sobriety under our belt. That's why it's step eight and not step one. We need to pray on it for one thing. We need to have that list put together. Talk it over with, with, your, with your recovery partners, your, your sponsor, your road dogs, your accountability people. Talk it over with them. Um, also, you want to think about the timing of this. There may be some people that you might be a little fearful of talking to, or they may be fearful of you. So you need to pray on this stuff and pray for God's timing to get you through there. Next month, we're going to talk about taking that list and actually going out and knocking on doors, making phone calls, whatever it takes. But right now, let's talk about our comforter. Okay, so we're in John chapter 16 and it's verses 8 through 15. Let's see. When he comes... He will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father where you can no longer see me. And about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you in, into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will only speak with what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it's from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. So Jesus is going to send to you the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is going to be talking to you, telling you words of truth. And basically the words of truth are the words from Jesus Christ. Um, you know, 
he's saying, what Jesus is saying in here is, is it's, it's a sin to, to reject Jesus Christ, especially if you're a believer and all of a sudden you reject Jesus Christ. I, I feel for you, but it, it is considered a sin. And so the Holy Spirit is going to be there to, to like psh, psh, slap you across the face and say, no, 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 no. <laughs> Maybe mine, mine does that, but <laughs> the Holy Spirit wants to work with you, help you work with yourself in doing what's right and getting your heart and your mind in the right mindset, the more the right heart set to become a child of God. So that Holy Spirit becomes our comforter. And especially when we're working these steps, there's some steps that are harder than others. And this step here, and, and in recovery, we do a lot of writing, we make a lot of lists, but it's with these lists that instead of keeping the lists in our heads, where we can blow things way out of proportion, if we write it down on a piece of paper and we have our sponsor, we have our road dog beside us, we can keep things in true perspective. Because if we keep them in our heads, they're going to get spun out of control. But if you put it down on paper, you can go back and you can take a look at it. Plus, you're unloading some of that baggage that's being stored in the closet of your mind. Amen. So our comforter, the Holy Spirit, along with your road dog, is going to help you with these lists. All right. So let's, um, let's read the devotional. We're in the life recovery. I forgot yesterday, and I'm so sorry. I got all pumped up because of the scripture that I read. Amen. So this is the life recovery devotional. We are step eight, and it's day 11, and it is called Our Comforter. We may wonder whether a particular name belongs on the list of those we've hurt. We may worry that we won't be able to, de to determine whom we've hurt. Or we may hesitate, fearing that our introspection will cause us to condemn ourselves too strongly. That's why a list is needed. In our head, we're going to condemn ourselves. But we need not worry. We have a helper to help us handle these problems. Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. Now that's John chapter 14, uh, verses 15 to 17. So he, our Father, is going to send us another advocate who will never leave us. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. That's John 16, and that's verses 8 and number 13. The Holy Spirit is God with us. We can ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to us all the names of those we've hurt. He will reveal them to us. The Holy Spirit comes to convict us of sin and to remind us of God's goodness and deliverance from judgment. Deliver us, uh, deliver us from judgment. All right. He is not, he's not there. He's not here with us just to condemn us. No, he's going to condemn us. We need let us know that, yeah, you need to repent. Convict us of sin, remind us of God's goodness and deliverance from judgment. That's what it is. He's not here. He's not here just to condemn us. Each pang of guilt can be given over to God for forgiveness the moment it arises. We don't need to worry about leaving someone off the list. The Holy Spirit can remind us about them later. Just write down everyone who comes to mind, asking God to give you the willingness to make amends. So that's what you want to do. Whether or not the situation calls for you to make amends, if that name comes to mind, write it down because you're going to go over it again. Right now, you're just getting, you're just making the list. And so if for whatever reason you have a pang in your heart, this name comes up, write it down. You may not, you may not owe them an amends, but write it down. Okay, we want to be thorough. Whatever name pops into your head, you want to be thorough. So as we face each new step, God will help us do and understand everything that's necessary to continue, to continue with your recovery. All right, it, these lists, it's like the moral inventory list. 
for listing our character flaws. Oh, that was a tough one, huh? Making these lists is helping you put everything into perspective, okay? Because at the time, we were not in the right mindset, all right? We were, we were deep into our addictions. And again, it doesn't have to just be drugs and alcohol. That addiction could be pornography. It could be gambling. It could be shopping. It could be a plethora of these, these compulsions, all right? But during these times when we were manic, we caused harm to people. Okay, so we want to put those names down. You know, it could have been that we just, we bullied somebody or we just gave somebody the cold shoulder and it hurt them. So we want to, we want to put those names down, but pray on this before you get started, sit down and pray on it. There's going to be some that are very obvious. You know, you stole from somebody, you were abusive to somebody. Those things are obvious. You broke something, you know, but then there's going to be others that are going to start popping up in your mind. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Put it down on your list. All right. So just remember that step eight, it's all about being willing to have the Holy Spirit walk you through getting this list put together. Okay. All right. Just remember just to pray on everything. And during this time... I just ask that you just keep friends, family in prayer. We're still, we're still in this, this lockdown mode. We're still in the pandemic mode, if you would. Um, you know, so there are some folks that, that are quarantined, self-quarantine, self-lockdown, isolation, loneliness, starts coming into play, depressions. And especially if you're making these lists, it can, it can bring you down a little bit because you're going to start thinking bad about yourself. Don't, okay? God's forgiven you. That's the main thing you want to remember. But as I'm saying, keep in touch because there's somebody that's going to need to hear from you. That phone call that you make to them is going to just lift them up so much. Say a prayer for everyone, you know, and, and just, uh, just, just lift up everybody. All right, just keep a smile on your face, be positive, because this, this too will pass, all right? So we just need to stay positive in the Lord, amen? So you guys have a great day today. Remember to read your scripture.